The first bicycles appeared in the early to mid 1800s, and at that time, it would have been difficult to predict the societal implications these two wheelers would have. But by the late 1800s, women had begun to embrace the bicycle and the newfound freedom it provided. Let me tell you what I think of bicycling. I think it has done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world. It gives women a feeling of freedom and self-reliance. I stand and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a wheel. The bicycle evolved through the 1800s, from the precursor dray scenes in the early part of that century that were pushed along with one's feet, to the first true bicycle with pedals and cranks, the Velocipede, which swept Europe and America in the 1860s. While the Velocipede was popular, there was one setback. It had a well-earned nickname of Bone Shaker. That was due to these wooden wheels surrounded by iron tires, making for a very rough ride. Then came the Penny Farthing, or high-wheeled bike, in 1870. The large front wheel allowed for greater speed, but that front wheel providing both power and steering made the bike unstable. That instability had made the high-wheeled penny farthing an unpopular addition to city sidewalks for pedestrians. Now, to this point, bicycling had been primarily a male-dominated pastime. Hard to imagine a woman in a hoop skirt trying to ride this bike. However, it all changed with the invention of the safety bike. To men, the bicycle in the beginning was merely a new toy. Another machine added to the long list of devices they knew in their work and play. To women, it was a steed upon which they rode into a new world. The safety bicycle, first produced in 1885 by John Kent Starley, had equally sized wheels, a chain drive transmission to increase speed with less pedaling. The chain powered the rear wheel for greater stability, and inflatable tires provided a smoother ride than ever before. The public quickly abandoned the penny farthing, opting instead for safety. The safety bike was more accommodating to women, and they began to take to the pastime. Manufacturers noticed. In 1888, the first female bicycle was produced by the Smith Manufacturing Company. The women's bike had a dropped frame to accommodate long flowing skirts and dresses, a guard to keep from tangling clothing in the wheels, and the bike's weight dropped from around 80 pounds to just over 20 pounds. But the real attraction of the bicycle for women of the day was the newfound freedom it provided. Prior to the bicycle, if a woman wanted to travel, it was typically by a horse and buggy that a man would prepare for her, and then he would accompany her on that journey. After the bicycle, however, women could travel alone or with other ladies. There was even more commingling between men and women outside of the family parlor. And as more women took to two wheels, they were getting exercise they had previously lacked, having been relegated to a largely indoor existence. The bicycle was providing women not only with personal freedom, but also a pathway to greater physical and mental strength. It is well nigh impossible to overestimate the potentialities of this exercise in the curing of the common and characteristic ills of womankind, both physical and mental, or to calculate the far-reaching effects of its influence in the matters of dress and social reform. In matters of dress, the bicycle had an additional impact. Hoop skirts were abandoned for more comfortable, bicycle-friendly clothing. Bloomers were the most popular accommodation, combined with trousers or split skirts as outerwear. The new dress, to many, was scandalous. In smaller cities like Cleveland, Buffalo, and notably in Chicago and Boston, the bloomer costume has been largely used. This tendency must be deprecated. There is slight gain in convenience, but there is an enormous loss in the gracefulness which every woman should religiously consider. There were plenty of critics to women's bicycling, primarily in the areas of fashion, but negative health warnings also began to emerge from doctors saying that a woman's fragile frame couldn't handle the strenuous activity of bicycling. As it turns out, exercise is a good thing. There were also warnings about a condition called bicycle face, in which the bicyclist was flushed but sometimes pale, lips drawn, dark shadows under the eyes, and always an expression of weariness. The health concerns were unfounded, and it was too late anyway. Women were on the move. The bicycle is credited as an inspiration not only toward independence, but also toward women's rights on the grander scale, women's liberation, suffrage, and the fight for equality. 
I began to feel that myself plus the bicycle equaled myself plus the world. Continue to learn at home with other great videos from the North Carolina Transportation Museum on Facebook, YouTube, and nctrans.org. The North Carolina Transportation Museum in Spencer is the museum that moves you.